Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome once again on this wonderful Sunday morning to Church Online. I want to share just a couple of things with you before we jump into our time of worship and praise. Uh, I want to just encourage you to take just a quick minute to get a wafer or a cracker and a, a little cup of grape juice or some type of juice, uh, because at the end of the message this morning, we'll be partaking of communion together in thanksgiving to the Lord for all that He's done for us. I also want to make an announcement that this Friday, this coming Friday at TGIF, the adult TGIF, will be having a guest speaker uh, from Northern California, and I want to just encourage you to come. He has a, a wonderful message on his heart to share with us. He'll also be with us the next morning, on Saturday morning, 8.30 a.m. in the conference room. Uh, he'll be sharing at a men's breakfast. So, men, come on out. We're looking forward to really a great time with, uh, with Brother Jeff Green. Uh, he has a word, again, for us, for our church. And I want to encourage you, men, to come. We're going to have a great time together. And then he'll also be with us on Sunday morning for our 10.30 a.m. service. So, come, invite a friend. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. We're looking forward to really a wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord together. And I just want to say, it's, it's what a great, great season it is, isn't it? It's Thanksgiving season. And so we're going to just enter now into a time of praise and worship, which really is a time for us to give praise and worship to the Lord for all that He has done for each and every one of us. Not just today, not just yesterday, but 24-7, 365 days of the year, the Lord is good and worthy to be praised. So join me now and let's worship and praise the Lord for His goodness to us.
Well, thank you, worship team, once again, for leading us in worship and praise to the Lord. He truly is worthy. Well, this is Thanksgiving season that we're in, really in the middle of it. It's hard to believe that we're already at the date that we're, we're already in the middle of November and uh, approaching Thanksgiving Day really quickly. And it's a day I know that we all look forward to, a day that we can set aside and give thanks to the Lord. But I want to ask you a question, maybe a little bit of a pop quiz here. Um, when is Thanksgiving Day? Think about that for just a minute. And you might be thinking, oh, he's throwing a trick question at us. And some might say, well, Thanksgiving Day is November 25th, Thursday, November 25th. And if you said that, you'd be correct. But, I, but I'm looking actually for a different answer. When was the first Thanksgiving Day for our country? And the first official Thanksgiving Day goes all the way back to 1789 when George Washington, our country's first president, proclaimed November 26th as a day of Thanksgiving. And then after that, Thanksgiving Day continued to be celebrated year after year in different states until finally, and at different times, until finally in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued a White House proclamation encouraging all the nation, all the American people, to celebrate Thanksgiving on the fourth Thursday in the month of November. And so as a result of that declaration, the fourth Thursday of each November has been proclaimed as the official Thanksgiving Day. And since then, every president that we've had in our country's history has made that proclamation each and every year. Now, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, I've got good news for you, is that though, though Thanksgiving is a holiday for the follower of Jesus Christ, Thanksgiving really takes place every single day of the year, uh, 365 days of the year. Now, we don't put aside each and every day as a holiday, but it's a day that God has given to us to live in Thanksgiving to Him. And so I want to just look this morning at, at really that subject, living your entire life as a thank you note to God. There's an old saying, and I know that you've heard it before, I've heard it many, many times before as well, but the saying goes that like this here, God's gift to you is life. He's given you breath, He's given you life, and then the end of that says, what you do with that life is your gift back to God. Now, we, uh, I always look at this here. This is a little hourglass, and an hourglass does exactly what you think it does. It measures time, and time is life, when you think about it, and life is time. And what you do with your life is so very, very, very important. The choices, decisions that you make, they impact your life tremendously, and all those around you as well. But, but there is no greater impact that we can have as human beings than to give our time back to God in, uh, in worshiping Him. And there's ways that we can do that. <clears throat> and I want to, uh, to look at that this morning. Now, scientists have said, the secular scientists, uh, not even followers of Jesus Christ, but, but secular scientists have said this here, that one of the healthiest emotions that you can have is having a, an attitude of thanksgiving, an attitude of gratefulness. And, and it, has, it has an impact, been proven scientifically, it has an impact on your health. There's nothing wrong with a holistic doctor, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with a medical doctor, um, but there's nothing wrong with going to a therapist or a counselor, but there is no emotion that you can have and that I can have that will impact our health, like will, an attitude of tremendous gratitude and thanksgiving. And so I want to, uh, to look at that this morning, and we'll be looking at many scripture verses from the book of Psalms. Now Psalms is filled with passages that talk about thanksgiving to the Lord. So uh, the first reason why, why we need to uh, really live our entire lives as a thank you gift, as a thank you note to God, is number one, 
is because who God is. Uh, it doesn't sound all that profound, and yet it is profound. Uh, thank you, God, because of who he is. Now, I just want to go through a list of things here that God is not. Uh, now, uh, if God was a mean-spirited, petty, vindictive, malicious creator, there'd be no reason to be thankful or to be gracious with our praise to him. If God was aloof, if he was uncaring, if he was indifferent, if he was detached from your life and my life, there'd be no reason to be grateful and thankful to him. If God was inconsistent, if he was unreliable, if he couldn't be trusted, then again, there'd be no reason for us to worship and to praise him. If God was cruel and evil and vicious, if he was hateful, then again, there'd be no reason to be grateful and thankful to God for who he is. If God was weak um, and he couldn't do anything about my problems or your problems or any problems, if he was powerless to help us in our time of need, then really, I'm not sure there'd be any reason to be grateful to him. But uh, none of those things are true about God. None of them are true about God. Not one of them. In fact, the scriptures, the Bible, teaches us the exact opposite. And again, I want to look at uh, many verses from the book of Psalms that will tell us about who God is and why we should worship him because of who he is. Now, Psalm 145, verse number 3 says, The Lord is great. He is worthy of our praise. No one can understand how really great he is. You know, a couple from our church just got back from taking some days off. And they went to one of my favorite places in all of California. And uh, they went to Yosemite National Park. One of my favorite places because you can't go to Yosemite and not just be in awe. And not just be, wow, wow. Everywhere you look, from El Capitan to Bridal Veil Falls to Half Dome, uh, the valley floor, wherever you look, you see the creation, the handiwork of God. How can you not praise Him and worship Him? And so Psalm 40, 145, 3 says, The Lord is great. He is worthy of our praise. No one can understand how really great He is. And then Psalm 97, verse 12 says, Give thanks. There's another reason why to give thanks. Give thanks to God as you remember how holy He really is. And you might, if you have your Bible out, you might even circle that word holy. What does it mean? Uh, holy. Well, it means he is pure. He is pure. It means he is perfect. It means that there is nobody like our God in all the universe. None like him. It means he is faultless. He's perfect. And that's the thing that we can thank God for. Another thing in this Thanksgiving season that we're in, he's pure, he's perfect, and he's faultless. He's faultless. Psalm 107 Psalm 107, verse number 8 says this here. Another reason to give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. <clears throat> you might want to circle that as well. I've said this many times that no one, no one will ever love you like God loves you. Not your mother, not your father, not your spouse, not your kid. Nobody will ever be able to, to love you like God loves you. And so let's give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. And that's a great word there, unfailing. That means that he never drops the ball. He never fails. He's always consistent. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He's an unfailing, loving God. And then the other, another passage, Psalm 7, verse number 17 says this here. I will thank the Lord because he is just. Now there's a lot of injustice that's going on, you know, all around us. Uh, people who are unfair, people who are prejudiced, people who do things out of selfish ambition, stepping on people and walking over them. But not God, He is just. He is just. Well, what does it mean to be just? What does it mean? Well, it means that He is fair. God is fair. He is fair. It means He's unprejudiced. It means that He's unbiased, just means he always, always, always does what is right. And friend, you can count on it. He's a just God. 
He always does what is right. Psalm 54, verse number 6 says, I will thank the Lord because He is good. Because He is good. Another word that you might want to, to circle is God is good. He's a good God. Everything in your life that is good, that's a blessing, has come from God. Stop and think about that for a minute. Everything good that has come into your life has been a blessing from God to you. And listen, there is, there's always something that we can thank God for. Uh, we used to sing a song, a hymn when I was a kid in church, sitting in the pew in Morgan Hill, California. And the song leader would lead us in a song called Count Your Blessings. Count, the chorus would go, Count Your Blessings, name them one by one, and you'll see what God has done. If you'll stop, friend, for just a moment and start to think about the blessings, the rich blessings that God has bestowed upon you, uh, listen, it'll surprise you to see what God has done. And in this Thanksgiving season and throughout the year, you'll, uh, you'll find great reason to give Him praise and to give Him worship. There's another uh, psalm. Psalm 118, verse number 1 says, Tell the Lord how thankful you are. Tell Him how thankful you are because He is kind and because He's always merciful. Nothing like being able to verbally express our thanks to God. And He loves that. That's why He made us. He made us to love us and He made us to love Him back. There's, uh, there's that word there that we look and it says, He is kind and always, always merciful. If you were to look up that word in the dictionary, I think you would find this uh, for always. What does always mean? Uh, always means always. It's always like that there. You know, sometimes we, we grow up, we may have parents that are not very consistent. One day you, you may experience that great embrace, the next day quite the opposite. Sometimes uh, you, you almost, as a kid growing, you think, well, I don't know what to expect today, but not only with God. God, our Heavenly Father, He is always merciful. He's always kind and loving to us. So I want you to know something this morning. No matter how badly you may have blown it this week or this month or the past year or your whole life, I want you to know no matter how bad you've messed up, God is always kind. He's always merciful. And I want you to know something, friend. His arms are open wide to embrace you, to invite you to come and enjoy a relationship with Him. Well, how do I show thanks uh, to God for, for who He is? Well, um, we give thanks because He's loving, because He's holy, because He's just, He's good, He's kind, and He's gracious, and He is great. The, uh, the Psalms share these words over and over and over again with us, but there are some, there are some ways in which we can express that praise to the Lord, giving Him thanks. But how do we give thanks? Well, one of the great ways that we can give thanks to the Lord is by verbally, you know, speaking praise to Him and singing. Singing. When you're in the car, I don't care what your voice is like. If you're in the car driving down the road, you're in the house all by yourself, or you're in the show, wherever you are, um, you, you can sing your thanks and your praise to God. Sing it from your heart. And, uh, and boy, there's a difference between just singing and then singing from your heart. I, I often uh, think about this when I go to a ball game and something great happens and the home team has hit a home run or a grand slam or you know, the pitcher has struck out the side. You know, everybody just you know, stands up and like, yeah! And they're just going crazy. I've been there and you have too. Uh, no matter what your personality type is. I remember even my father, who was a lot more of a reserved man, go to a game, somebody hits a home run, one of those San Francisco Giants, all this, boy, he would come, you know, and you're, you're, uh, you're yelling, you're cheering. And it's like, if we can do that, if we can do that um, for an athlete or for our favorite team, it's like, oh, how much more can we do that? Can we express verbally, with our hands, 
shouts of praise to the Lord for his faithfulness to us. Well, let's look at another passage of scripture. Psalm 147 verse 7 says, Sing out your thanks to him. Sing praise to our God. Sing praise to him. And it's a great thing to offer our praise. Well, another way uh, that we can do, we can express our thanks to God, not just by singing, but we can also do it by thanking God in prayer. And what is prayer? Prayer is just communication with the Lord. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, all the these and the thous. And, uh, God's not interested in that. He's, he's interested in, in fellowship. He's interested in visiting with you, talking to you. There's a, a, a lady in our church, Sister Christina. She, uh, when she prays, she calls him Dad. And she talks to him uh, like we're communicating. She just talks to him and worships him. Listen, we can, uh, we can thank God verbally by praying, spending time in prayers. Well, I don't know how to pray two hours. I don't know how to pray an hour. Listen, uh, start simple. Uh, pray. Make a set a goal for three minutes, five minutes, and then grow from there. But talk, but talk to God. Psalm 105, verse number one says, Give thanks to the Lord and pray to Him. Give thanks to the Lord and pray to Him. And we give Him worship, we give Him praise <clears throat> because of what He has done. We give Him praise and, uh, and, and worship for, and thank, we give thanks to God for who he is. And then I think on the flip side, we give praise to God for what he has done. Who he is and what he has done. Psalm 52, verse number 9 says, I will thank you, God, forever for what you have done. So remember, we, uh, we give praise and worship to God for who he, for, for, uh, we thank God for who he is. We worship him and praise him for what he's done, his faithfulness in our lives. Psalm 148, verse number 5 says, Let all things, let all things praise the Lord because we were created to, uh, to worship Him. So, uh, we, can, uh, we, can, we can praise and thank Him for uh, that He has saved us. We can thank Him and praise Him for answered prayer. We can thank Him for direction that He gives in our lives. Psalm 16, 7 I will praise the Lord because He guides me. The fifth thing is, uh, we can worship and praise Him because He came to earth and He died for us. I like the passage of Scripture, Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. It says, we were spiritually dead. We were spiritually dead because of our sins and our sinful nature. But God has given us new life in Christ. He's done that for us. And, you know, at this uh, Christmas or, or this Thanksgiving season that, that is, uh, leads us right into the Christmas season, it's a time in which we can give thanks to the Lord. And, and I want to do that right now. I want to just partake of communion together. And uh, for us to do this in sharing our thanks and our praise to God for who He is and what He has done for us. And so the bread, it represents the broken body of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and really what communion is, it's a reminder for us. Uh, we can always look at communion as a tap on the shoulder, a reminder to us to remember what the Lord has done for us. And so the bread represents the broken body of Jesus Christ. Let's partake of it together in thanks to the Lord for what He has done for us. The many answers to prayer the precious gift of salvation, the, uh, his death, his resurrection um, uh, from the dead to bring hope and life to us. So let's partake of the bread this morning in remembrance of what Christ has done for us. Let's do that now. Jesus, thank you for all that you did on the cross for us. Thank you that your body, Lord, you took lashes on your body. The Bible says you were unrecognizable because of all the punishment that you took upon yourself for our sins. We ask for your blessing on the bread as we partake of it this morning. And we'll thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's partake together. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for, for who you are. 
Oh, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. Then he took the cup. He said the cup represents his shed blood. It's a symbol, again, of his shed blood that he, uh, that he shed on Calvary, the suffering that he went through on our behalf. And so the cup represents the shed blood of Christ for you and for me. And without the shedding of blood, the scripture says there'd be no remission for sin. There'd be no forgiveness for our sins if Christ had not done what he did, died on the cross, was placed in a tomb, three days later he rose from the dead to bring hope and life to you and to me. So Lord, we thank you for the cup this morning. We ask for your blessing upon it as we partake of it together this morning. Thank you for it, Lord. May your blessing rest on, on these, simple, these emblems that we take that are symbolic of all that you've done for us. Lord, I pray for friends this morning that may be struggling and battling emotionally, maybe depression, maybe they need a healing touch in their body. Lord, you went to the cross to bring hope and life and forgiveness for our sins to us, but you also, Lord, left your church, the gifts of the Spirit, and one of those is healing. And so, Lord, for those friends that may be suffering this morning from uh, emotionally or Lord, physically, minister to them and touch them as we're here remembering you and all that you did for us and all that you provided for us through your death and resurrection. Lord, bless the cup, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you did for us. Friend, I just want you to to continue, and I know you probably have already, but but continue to live each day uh, as a thank you note to God as we move closer to the to uh, to Thanksgiving, where we can gather around a table, thank God for His many many blessings to us, and of course, none is a greater than the gospel message that Jesus died on the cross, was placed in a tomb, three days later He rose from the dead so that we can have forgiveness for our sins and receive the free gift of eternal life. God bless you, friend, and, and enjoy the rest of this Sunday and walk in thanksgiving to God for who He is and for what He has done. God bless you. We, uh, we look forward to seeing you at TGIF on Friday, 7 o'clock, uh, the men's breakfast, 8.30 a.m. on Saturday morning, and then next Sunday, 10.30 a.m. with uh, Brother Jeff Green. And I just want to invite you to come for all three of those events. We're looking forward to a great time together. God bless you, everyone, and give you a great rest of the day.